Rock The Rock Pile Report. The pettiest, hardest drinking Bills podcast. Welcome, everybody, to another edition, a Father's Day weekend edition of the Rock Pile Report podcast. I'm your host, Bills season ticket holder, Drew Gear. That's my producer, Chris Krueger. And uh, we're here tonight talking about the quarterback salary roller coaster in the NFL right now. Josh Allen and what it might mean to the Buffalo Bills. So, first of all... I've got to pour a little out there for all of my... uh, In fact, we're going to be talking to one here in a few minutes, but... uh, All of my upset Miami Dolphins fans, because the longer that they sit, that franchise sits on its hands and waits to do something with its quarterback situation, Chris, the price tag just keeps going up, doesn't it? Yeah, when I saw that Trevor Lawrence deal come by, I swear I saw a photo on Dolphins, the Dolphins Twitter account of Tua at a desk signing something like a week and a half ago. (laughs) I assumed his contract was... Come, was you thought it was going to be done. announced, <laughs> but I guess uh, we got Trevor Lawrence. What was it? Five years, two seventy five. I think was the was the deal. I'll pull it up on Spotrack. So, so I want that's you to pull my... up the contract breakdown because that's going to be part of this conversation. But <clears throat> so th- a few days ago, the Jacksonville Jaguars announced that they had reached a contract extension with their former first num- first overall pick, Trevor Lawrence, and that's nice for them as a franchise and a fan base I think I gotta really know it, it, is it a good thing Chris that they have decided to marry themselves to this quarterback I I, I mean win a playoff game but also <laughs> what else are you gonna do you either pay him or you don't pick up his you pick up his fifth year option and then you go the Kirk Cousins route and you franchise tag, and then you franchise franchise tag again. Well, that so there's a lot. Seems that like goes, it don't make sense. There's a lot that goes into this, right? Because Lawrence, not a. If you were to try to pick, like, if you could point to a quarterback in the NFL and you say, "Well, that guy's terrible," Chris, like, if I were to say it to you, name a garbage quarterback in the NFL right now. Trevor Lawrence's name probably isn't the first one that comes to mind, right? No. Okay. This guy, but, but at the same time, not being terrible and being preeminently talented and a winner in the NFL are two totally different things. Lawrence now holds the highest average annual value in the NFL, tied with Joe Burrow, for new money. And he's got this giant new money average, despite just one playoff win, compared to Burrow's AFC title win and Super Bowl appearance. Like, I don't understand. And then you go down some of the more dubious statistics, and we can get to those with our guests here in a minute. But I asked, I reached out because I wanted to get the temperature of the room and see how the Jaguars fan base was reacting to the news, because that's really the important part from my perspective. How do you as a fan feel about it? So we reached out to JK the third from Down by the Bank podcast, frequent guest of the show. He says, I love it all around. From a fan perspective, it's amazing. He goes, we got Josh Allen, the good one, <laughs> we got his deal done, and we extended Trevor. The Jags have never re-signed two draft picks in a single offseason, so everyone here is buzzing. Now, first, let's take a step back here. The Jacksonville Jaguars just re-signed two draft picks in the same offseason, and that's like it's got their fan base doing cartwheels. That alone should tell you that this is not a franchise that's known for making great choices. He says on the financial side, it's a smart move. Gave him some guaranteed money for what he's done so far, but the bulk of the deal doesn't start to hit the books until 25. The 55 million is sticker shock, and the NFL is in the business of what if. The Jags can't afford not to pay him, and we can't afford to take a shot on any of the next quarterback classes. If he has the season we we hope he does this year, it's a steal. If he shits the bed... At least I've got a king size bed and I live near the beach. <laughs> and I feel like that is the most, like, I feel like that's the most Jacksonville Jaguars fan answer. Like, that's it. If this goes bad, we're so used to coping, it doesn't matter. Trust me, Bills fans are fluent in it. We cope. I, I think our coping skills are up there, although see, some people in our fan base are getting a little rusty, myself included. When you look at just some quick hits on the structure of the contract, Chris has this pulled up here on screen in front of me, too. 
cap hits from 2024 to 2026 are all going to be less than 25 million, which I think is really what matters, right, Chris? I would assume so. There is a potential out in the contract in 2028. There's no guarantees or dead money left after that point. So in reality, this nine-year deal that I'm pa- on paper runs nine seasons with the void years, it's a five-year deal, at which case you're either going to cut bait or you're going to restructure, which seems more in line with what should happen. Yeah, and, and you know what this is a direct byproduct of, Chris? Patrick Mahomes in that 10-year contract? Yes. They broke, they broke the paradigm when he signed that deal. And the problem is, is now everybody's trying to play that, but they don't have Patrick Mahomes. So great that you've structured this contract well. It doesn't change the nature of the quarterback that you're getting. Now, I know you're all asking, why did we just spend five, six minutes talking about the Jacksonville Jaguars in a Buffalo Bills podcast? Tonight, we're going to take a look at the quarterback extensions that are currently taking place around the AFC, the impact it could have on Josh Allen's upcoming extension, and why all of these extensions, <clears throat> even if money, even if percentage of the cap were to get worse from from a next contract perspective for Josh Allen, why ultimately all of these guys getting re-signed might be a good thing for the Buffalo Bills. Now, a few weeks ago, we did a show about the wide receiver two market. We talked about the rampant inflation, and we just talked about our salaries at that position which used to be something, Chris, that you watch teams every year. They'd know who their guy was. And if they couldn't draft a competent number two that would eventually become their number one, they replaced that guy or just let him walk in free agency. Now those guys are signing record-breaking contracts. We kind of alluded to some of the reasons why. You know, you, you're seeing so much wide receiver money being paid because they're viewed as a band-aid for teams that know they have somewhat mediocre quarterback play, or maybe their offensive line play isn't great. But the question is, what happens when those mediocre quarterbacks all of a sudden are getting paid, rather than just being stopgap options? That's where this becomes a problem for a lot of NFL teams, and Trevor Lawrence could very well be the poster child for this. I mean, here's a rundown of statistics that should, like, here's a stat. I don't want to say that I came up with it. Heath Cummings tweeted this out. Here's a list of all-time NFL quarterbacks with at least 1,750 career pass attempts and a career touchdown percentage under 3.4. Trevor Lawrence, Daniel Jones, Chad Henney, David Carr, Kerry Collins, Joey Harrington, Cordell Stewart, Rick Meyer. <laughs> Meyer. Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, that guy. The guy who is now coaching the Chargers. That's not exactly a who's who of uh, the guys who went on to become the straw that stirred the drink for their teams offensively, eh, Chris? No. He, he, this, this touchdown percentage, right? Over the last three seasons... He ranks 27th out of 30 qualifying quarterbacks. It's a brutal, (laughs) that's a brutal host of people to share statistics with. But I understand one or two stats doesn't quite tell the whole story of who a player is. At the same time, you're talking about that guy who, despite having a favorable structure, has just one playoff win. He is, I believe he led the NFL last year or at least was at the bottom of the NFL for third down completion percentage. Like he was at the bottom for third down completion percentage and led the NFL in turnovers, interceptions in the fourth quarter. Not ideal. (laughs) So what you've done is you've taken a quarterback who it's dubious as to whether or not they can be the backbone singularly of a winning team when they're getting paid more. And you're now putting them firmly into that conversation. Anybody with eyeballs can see that Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen are arguably, but not really arguably, at the top of not just the AFC, but the entire NFL in terms of the mental and physical abilities that it takes to play quarterback in the NFL. And ultimately, the ability to single-handedly will their team to victories. Yet they both sit at 9th and 11th 
respectively, in average annual value. And they're technically underpaid. If you look at all the new money that's getting injected into the quarterback market over the last few years, Mahomes signed his 10-year deal back in 2020. His unique structure is paving the way for a lot of the nonsense we're seeing now. And Josh Allen, 2021, signs $150 million practical guaranteed money. Okay? Deshaun Watson, the following year, gets $230 million fully guaranteed with Cleveland. Now, I understand you can say, well, it's Cleveland and they're not smart. But it doesn't matter. It happened. Now, thankfully, not everybody, like, what the, what the Cleveland Browns did there was the equivalent, Chris, of the guy who wants to try to start a run on a certain position in fantasy. Kicker. When the guy goes, I know what I'm going to do. I need a tight end. I don't want anyone taking them, so I'm going to try to start a run. Or like, hey, there's a couple, the, the, big, the strongest defenses went off the board already. I know what I'm going to do. I need a defense, so I need everybody else to draft something else. I'll scare them into drafting. <laughs> and they take the first kicker off the board. And then five more defenses go off the board afterwards. They signed, and for everyone who's asking who would do that, I play in a league like that. <laughs> One of the guys is notorious for getting hammered and thinking like, okay, I've done so poorly. I'm going to trick everyone else into doing poorly so that I can do good. I don't, it's one hell of a draft philosophy. Luckily, nobody took the bait and we just let Cleveland be Cleveland. But the following year, Lamar Jackson signs a less rich deal than that, but a sizable uptick in quarterback salary from when Mahomes and Allen signed. And then this offseason, Jared Goff signing a massive extension that puts him at the top of the quarterback pay scale. He's now up there in that conversation. Now, the NFLPA loves it when these salaries start to jump because the belief is your, float, your rising tides will float all boats and set a precedent for future contracts to come. Well, that's been happening. <laughs> it's been happening in spades. And the question is, is it good for football? Is it good for the AFC? And is it kind of helpful for the Buffalo Bills in our pursuit of a title. And so with that, we welcome tonight's guest to the show, Mr. Elf Artiaga from Three Yards Per Carry. You know him and love him from our AFC's Roundup series. Elf, you know what? You know what the, you know what happened last night? I started rooting for your damn team. That's the problem. That's the problem. The second I said, you know what? Let's just get this over with. Let Florida go out there and just massacre these guys. I'm rooting for Florida tonight. I told my wife that, and they just butchered you guys. It's my fault. It's not their fault. Yeah, odd rush after odd rush, and they didn't care past the like. As soon as that third goal came, went in, you, you could just tell like, okay, once they got the goal to make it two one, I'm like, okay, they're gonna make this a game. Uh, this is a typical Florida game all year, where typical Panther game where they fall behind a goal, they fall behind two goals, they grind it out, they win it by two goals at the end. Uh, as soon as that third goal went in, you could just tell like, you guys were already packed for for Florida. Like, you know, to hell with this. For those of you who don't know what we're Besides, referencing. Sweeps are, sweeps are fascist. Uh, you know, gentlemen <laughs> sweeps are a little bit more democratic. Gentlemen sweeps. Guys, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, the uh, Florida Panthers blew their opportunity to sweep for their first Stanley Cup title last night. Edmonton just cleaned their clock. Wouldn't you rather win at home? And. And Sergei yeah. Bobrovsky, a friend of mine, has he just started watching hockey again for the first time in, like, 14 years. So he has no idea who any of these teams are, but he was like, oh, my God, I remember loving NHL playoffs, and this is perfect. It's better than football. It's better than baseball. Like, NHL playoffs, he's like, I, I missed this. So he's been riding Florida this entire time going, man, this." And th when the series started, he's like, this Bobrovsky guy is amazing. And I start laughing because I go, you have no idea who Sergei Bobrovsky is. So last night he sends me a text. He goes, what the hell just happened? I go, no, you're getting the Bobrovsky experience. He's amazing. Or he's awful. And there will be no in-between. <laughs> yes. Yes. It usually works that way. Uh, goalie is kind of like quarterbacks. Like there's only one on the, there's only one for each team on the ice in any given game. And you kind of win or you, you live or die by them yeah. a lot of the another time. stat another interesting stat only interesting to me because i've been harping on this matthew kachuk in the last six games have has three times as many giveaways for for odd man rush goals that he does points <laughs> you hate hey you hate to see it i'm re i'm gonna i'm gonna play i'm gonna pull out the smallest violin and play you the saddest song ever written 
Like so, it's weird, man. Uh, the the Panthers are have been pretty dominant these playoffs. Like I really have not. Sw- Look, I put in a, a pretty large bet for them to win the Eastern Conference and to win the Stanley Cup when they were down 2-1 to the Rangers. Because I saw those first three games, and I'm like, wow, this is the most overwhelming I've seen. You have no business losing these games. It'll be fine. <laughs> you yeah, have no business if, losing. If, You'll be fine. If this is what it takes for them to lose games in the Eastern Conference Finals, then, yeah, I'm going to be pretty fine. So I was pretty confident that they were going to win, Okay. But it's 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 almost insane how one of their best players can be completely absent for damn near two series, and <laughs> here they are a game away from winning it all. Mm-hmm. So a couple weeks ago, we did a show on wide receiver finance. I know you sent me some Google. You had some beef with some of my comments about the Dolphins affording their wide receivers. But I compared what's happening in the market to kind of the 2007 housing bubble, where I go, people are buying things that aren't worth what they are in ways with contract mechanisms that are kind of ticking time bombs if you don't manage them properly. If you know how to structure and manage a contract like some of the savvier GMs in the NFL do, then you're fine. If you're just trying to copycat what you see other people doing, sometimes you can get yourself in trouble. And I also mentioned how historically the preeminent talents at the position were the highest paid, and that just held. You know, the Megatron, Larry Fitzgerald ceiling, that everybody, Julio Jones, A.J. Green, all these guys were, they'd butt up against it, but nobody was better than them, and everybody knew it, so nobody got paid more than them. If you look back at the 2000s, there was like a similar, there was a chunk of time where there was a similar dynamic with Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning and Tom Brady, they held the highest cap hit of any NFL quarterback from 2002 to 2009. Like There was a seven-year run where they were at the top, or at least in the top five, for cash and for cap expenditure. Which makes sense. They deserve to be in that conversation. Drew Brees comes along and gets his monster deal because he goes to the Saints, I think, in 07 is when he he went there. You probably remember because I remember the Dolphins yeah. were flirting with him. Yeah, it was, it was 07. So 07, he goes there on a what looked like a bridge deal, and then he gets a monster deal afterwards because they realize what he is. And then afterwards, Tom Brady started taking less, kind of in an approach to keep the team competitive, so he was no longer trying to pace the market. Uh, I, was that before or after he started dating a woman who made more money than him? <laughs> it was right at that time. <laughs> See, everyone's like, oh, no, look at what a good teammate he is. No, he's just a smart businessman. He goes, wait a minute. I got a sugar mouth. He was also doing a very, very smart thing. Remember, he was converting his salary all into cash and just paying the, 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 what is that called? Because I just paid it two years ago. The, Ask it's the short term capital gains tax. Yes. So he was paying that over and over again every single year, which is just 16.5% right off the top. Mm-hmm. And he was saving himself. About a million or two million dollars in taxes long term. Which, again, so. that's savvy accounting. Mm-hmm. But so what I, what I like about this dynamic is over that period of time, Alf, your, your memory is really long and you're also much older than me. <laughs> During that period of time, 2002, 2012, we'll call it. Breeze. Peyton Manning, Tom Brady. Was there a better quarterback in the NFL outside of those three? No. Okay. So when you see them at the top of the pay scale, it makes sense. And then things got kind of weird and stuff started happening and teams started making decisions because I think they sat there. Like I used to be impressed by the statistic that, you know, from 2002 to 2000 or 2001 to 2011, it was Tom Brady, Ben Roethlisberger and Peyton Manning were the only quarterbacks from the AFC to represent our conference in a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And I used to find that really impressive. And then I started this weekend digging into some of the people who got extensions at quarterback during that time frame and looking at the quarterbacks who were being paid and starting to come over the top of Peyton Manning and starting to flirt with being paid like Drew Brees in the NFC. Yeah, it's a problem. Like Joe Flacco. <laughs> Joe Flacco was the ultimate bet on myself. I'm going to get myself paid. And the Ravens kind of felt hamstrung by that. Now, do you recall at that time? Like, It's like the early, I think it was like 2011, 2012, around that time when this whole thing happens. I think they won the 2012 Super Bowl is what it was because it was the Har Bowl. But mm. 
the idea is that he got paid on his extension the same amount of money as Aaron Rodgers. Was Joe Flacco ever deserving of being in that conversation? No. He was the first, um, uh, what's the, the right <clears throat> word? He was the first one to not fit. Because you remember all the, is Flacco elite stuff? He was never elite. He just played elite in the playoffs. Yep. But he was never an elite quarterback. Like, he was never box office. No. Okay. The, the, but, you know, he he was able to essentially just threaten the, the Ravens with, I'll just leave here, you know. And then you're left with no quarterback, and then you're nervous about it, and then you pay him. And, and that's, that's usually what, what happens with that type of quarterback. And this is what happens, right? Because he signs that contract extension. They proceed to finish third in their division for three straight seasons. And they only had one playoff appearance from the year they touched the, touched the Lombardi to 2017, right? When the Bills squeaked in off Andy Dalton's epic touchdown pass on fourth down to Tyler Boyd. And we beat them out for the playoffs. And they finally are just like, all right, that's enough. <laughs> we have to draft another quarterback. Like, we can't keep doing this. That's what you got for your money if you were the Ravens. It gets worse. Ryan Tannehill. This Daniel Tosh looking son of a bitch goes out there, gets a six year contract despite him not appearing in a single playoff game in his entire career. Never led Miami to a winning record. Like you forget, he was out the, at the end of the season. That Dolphins game that we lost here, here in Buffalo, when we only had 10 men on the field and Jay Ajayi took it for like 60 yards in overtime. It was, I've. I'm happy I had walked out of that game. I was like, it's Christmas Eve. I'm not doing this to myself. It was the great Matt Moore. The Matt Moore show. That's the guy who had to hold serve down the stretch and take them into just a playoff beating by the Steelers. But it didn't matter. They made the playoffs. And that's it. But Ryan Tannehill wasn't part of that equation, but he, he got paid. He was a part of that. And got unceremoniously dumped on the Tennessee Titans for like a fifth-round pick. I think you guys had to send a fifth round pick, didn't you? Uh, no, they got a fourth round pick for, okay. for Ryan Tanning. Okay. Yeah. So you, there's another guy who got extended by an AFC team during this like time frame we're talking about when it's like it's still Tom Brady's show and he's still just running the AFC. Peyton Manning's physically starting to fall apart. Andrew Luck had his moment in the sun, but started to physically fall apart. Blake Bortles got an extension. The Jaguars signed that guy for <laughs> contract extension. Off of the strength of one season out of nowhere. <laughs> so when you think about all the mediocre quarterback play that was taking place at that time, I'm not shocked. Pete Manning, Drew Brees, and Ben Roethlisberger twice made it to the Super Bowl because they were the best that the AFC could muster and nobody else could find anyone. But some of these teams made it worse. Like, made it worse pronounced, like, pronouncedly worse, by continuing to double down on mediocre quarterbacks. Because all you did was now you paid more money for a thing you already don't know if it works or not. And I think that wishing it to work with a quarterback, like, that's not a place you want to work, a place you want to live in, right? No, no. no, no. Yeah, you got to find you got to find your guy and then have him fit a system and then you need results, you know? So now we live in this place where we're seeing it happen again, where there's a cycle of mediocre quarterback play that's being rewarded with giant contracts. You, given the nature of your team's quarterback situation, have been doing a lot of research on the market, and you said something really interesting to me about salary cap inflation and how that's going to make a lot of these new contracts that seem stupid make more sense in a few years. Can you expand on that? Yeah, everybody's essentially doing this, okay? And I'll try to I'll try to explain it in like in in normal terms instead of like football terminology. Imagine that you're at your job and you just got a promotion. And you're projecting that 3 years from now you're going to get another promotion which is going to come with a bump in pay. So you decide, you know what? I'm going to go buy a boat. Wait a minute, what do you mean you're going to buy a boat? Yeah, I'm going to buy a boat because I'm going to have this income that's coming in 3 years, right? So it might tighten up my finances now, but in three years, my finances are going to be absolutely great. So I'm going to go buy a boat. And not only am I going to go buy a boat, but maybe I could buy a vacation home by taking out a second mortgage because it's going to be paid for by this promotion I'm getting in about three years. 
This only goes haywire on all these contracts, especially that top 10 that I sent you from Spotrack. Yep. Of which Tua, uh, I believe Tua was going to be somewhere around number eight on that list Mm -hmm. of cap charges. That top 10, it goes haywire if the cap does not continue to go up. It's projected to go up about 30 million in the next three years. And that's when all these contracts come due. And then there's a couple that are going to mature and they're going to have to be redone, which are essentially the top two on that list, which is Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. That 30 million is essentially paying for the inflation on these contracts. And that's what these teams are doing. And that's why they're really not holding the line at 50 million or even 54 million. They're operating on the assumption, you know what? We're just going to keep kicking the can on this, on these contracts because we could just keep adding a void year at the end of this contract to try to make Mm -hmm. that cap space open three years from now. And then three years from now, we're banking on this quarterback still being good and he's going to have a 12 year career. So we'll be able to extend them at market once again and then add another few void years. And essentially, this is only going to come due when this player is at the end of his career, when he's no longer worth that money, and you have to eat a couple of years of salary. Or he's actually going to be worth it all the way through, how probably Patrick Mahomes is going to be and how Tom Brady was. Mm -hmm. So that's what teams are doing. Uh, They're playing with the projections of the salary cap three years from now. And so fiscally, you can get yourself, if you're a GM, because this is the the reality. Like I, I was sitting around thinking about it, and I brought this up to a friend of mine just to bounce the idea off of him. And his response was, I don't know why they don't just get somebody else. Great. Just get someone else, guys. Go get another NFL quarterback. Do you know how many yeah. teams that has not been working out for? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, Look at the it, bills. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't really work that way. Once you find one that runs your system well and and he's productive, uh, yeah, you hold on to that guy. And the funny okay? thing is the guy that I said this to is a Bills fan. And I go, do you did you forget about the the twenty year window where our lives were dog shit because we couldn't find another guy. We just couldn't find one. And they were like, well, yeah. it was like we tried, tried drafting them. We tried paying them in free agency. We tried trading for them. It didn't matter. <laughs> yeah, no, quarterbacks Quarterbacks are like homes, okay? And it's like somebody going out there and saying, you know what? I'm not, I'm not paying my rent. I'll go sleep under a, a, a tree or a bridge, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because I'm, I'll not, risk. Paying, I'll I'm risk. not paying what they're asking in the market for this home. <laughs> Now, these are stupid people. And so so this is it. But now you look, so, so in one hand, in one I guess in one sense, you can take a look at this and say, these guys getting paid what they're getting paid now. The Bills still have some of these cap machinations that you're talking about. This ability to add void years and different cap structures. So you can still make it reasonable to sign a quarterback like a Pey- Peyton, uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes or a Josh Allen. But it's going to cost you more at the initial buy-in than it's costing these guys because they have the, the, the runway. Right? So when we pay Josh Allen, he's going to carry a pretty significant percentage of the salary cap. Yeah. Just like, just like Patrick Mahomes. Whenever they redo this deal to continue to make sure he feels like he's getting what he's worth, he, you're going to see him. There's going to be upticks in what his percentage of the cap is. Whereas these quarterbacks are going to be locked in at a lower number. Yes. From a cap, if all I cared about, if NFL titles were won by the salary cap, <laughs> then this would be a perf- Then this would be perfect, right? Yeah, and all it really does it forces all these teams, and eventually it'll be. I did the number; it's like fifteen teams. Oddly enough, it's the fifteen teams you would bet on to make the playoffs every single year. Mm-hmm. Okay, the other fifteen that are not are either teams with guys on rookie deals or with bad quarterbacks, yeah. okay, that do not get paid. And or with taxi quarterbacks, you know, guys that, you know, they just go out in the market and find the next uh, Gardner Minshew, like the Raiders. So okay. this becomes the question, though. When I look around the NFL, like the, right now, right now I have the list. Let's see, where are we? Went to our lads and I looked at the list of starting quarterbacks in the AFC. 
In the AFC North, it's going to be Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson. Three of those guys are getting paid significant money by their teams. Russell Wilson could be terrible. We don't know. But he's not getting paid anything anyway, so it doesn't matter. If he's bad, he's bad. The Steelers might have gotten, out of all the teams that have ever tried to play that position cheap, they might have gotten the best deal in getting Justin Fields and and Russell Wilson where they have them. Mm -hmm. That's probably the best value you're ever going to get. I don't know whether that makes you a contender or not. I don't know. You have C.J. Stroud, Anthony Richardson, one of these players on a rookie deal that you just mentioned, Trevor Lawrence and Will Levis. Do any of those guys scare you? No. Maybe Stroud? Oh, yeah, Stroud, but it's also it's all a, a projection. He repeats his it. rookie year, his second year, then, yeah, absolutely. But then you're just a year away from putting him in that top ten again. Exactly. Uh, of, of cap charges. <laughs> Bo Nix, Patrick Mahomes, the aforementioned Gardner Minshew, and Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert, who you go to war over on social media. I've never seen a person get as... Like, you you and the haters, like, guys... For the, so what you're seeing is a chart that uh, Elf made. He was debating not only the Trevor Lawrence stands, but the Justin Herberts with this awesome graphic that he made. Yes, that is a statue of Easter Island with blonde hair. <laughs> He goes to war with these people who argue with him about Herbert versus Tua statistically. And I, I think if you're looking at the same graphic I am, guys, you can acknowledge that it's not very close. It's not very close. And that's maybe not his fault, but that's not what we're, But one of these guys is getting paid in the top you know, 10 of quarterbacks. And one of yeah, them remember, is... Yeah, and, and I'm not even... Look, I'm allowing for... Like, look, uh, it's... Like, I'll allow for somebody to say, you know what? I like Trevor Lawrence more than Tua. Okay, you're making a projection. You think he's going to be better? You think he's going to live live up to his hype? That's fine. You could even say, look, I think that Herbert is better than Tua. Okay, uh, you like his talent. You like his size, his, his arm strength. You project forward. You, you think in the right system with the right players. And... And this does that, and the other thing does the other thing. He's going to be absolutely great. But you can't come at me and say, all these guys deserve $55 million, and Tua deserves to be a manager at a McDonald's. <laughs> like, don't do that. Just don't do that. Because then I am going to clown you on Twitter. So I'm looking at this right now. Ball reference. So here's where this, and this is kind of the takeaway that I want us, everyone who's just heard us blather about quarterback contracts for about a half hour. In terms of what this means to the Buffalo Bills, you know you have one of the arguably top three players at their position in the entire NFL. And you look at what happens when these other guys get paid and start eating up more of their cap. Like these are teams that couldn't make the right personnel decisions when they had all of the cap space that these guys had on the rookie deals. Now, whether the cap goes up or not, they've taken a chunk of that away from a, com from just from a competitive standpoint. Also marrying yourself to mid, right? Like that's what it feels like. Some of these teams are doing. They're saying, look, I'd rather be with a girl who cheats on me than not have one at all. <laughs> so I will just do this and it'll be fine and we'll find a way to make it work. But you're not only getting mediocrity, but you're paying for it. Like in the instance of Trevor Lawrence, all those dubious statistics that come along with him, you're still like now you're hooked. Even if it is only a five year, you know, for practical purposes, a five year contract that'll then either get redone or he'll get cut. And it's complete projection, really. His, it's, it's all projections. His entire, his success in the NFL is nothing but a projection. Yeah, because you can make a, a strong case. Look, Herbert uh, deserves to be paid because you can project and the production is that of at least a top 10 quarterback, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Burrow, he has some skin. He, ha he has some, some heads on the wall. He has the numbers. He runs a good offense. Okay, fine. You can pay him. Uh, Jalen Hurts, you have a very specific system. He had a very big year. Uh, then he had a bad year, but he had a good year. You paid him off the good year. That makes sense. Tua, he runs the number one offense. Two years with the same coach, he ran the number two and the number one offense while he was in, in there. His numbers are good. You know, the team is exciting. It's kind of box office. It's sexy. It puts asses on in the seat, so you can mm -hmm. pay all those guys. But some of these guys are just total projections, and some of them are just complete mistakes. Like, there was nothing in Daniel Jones's career or in his play that warranted an extension it just just doesn't matter 
Trevor Lawrence should be playing on a fifth year option. <laughs> and he should be having his feet held to the fire, really. Because because he hasn't proven anything. He's got no play. He doesn't have a playoff win, which you could say neither neither does Tua. But at the same time, he's never led the NFL's best offense. He's never. So you, I guess my takeaway is, if from a Bills perspective, even though we are going to pay Josh more than some of these teams who think they're being savvy now by marrying themselves to mid at the quarterback position, at the end of the day, who would you rather be with for another five years? <laughs> Would you rather have a Trevor Lawrence or a Josh Allen? I'll continue to pay more. It's the it's the thing of I I know that I'm going to be more competitive, and in fact, if anything, it makes me feel better about my place in the AFC because I go now the Chargers are stuck with Justin Herbert, which tells me that I don't know unless Jim Harbaugh is otherworldly as an offensive coordinator, and unless they can really build an actual offensive line because I don't think they've had one in 15 years. Unless they can do those two things, I don't care who you have at wide receiver, and I don't care who your play caller is, I don't care who your head coach is. You're not going to be all that competitive. You'll be no, and I, and I want to tell you, and I want to tell you another thing. It's it's also how you build your team. You can't pay these quarterbacks twenty percent of your cap and then decide to do what the Chargers are doing. I'm going to go get big <clears> offensive <throat> linemen, a running back, and tight ends, and we're just going to run it forty five times a game. <laughs> Like, that's just stupid. Well, I mean, that is you know? kind of what... If you have a Josh Allen, you're going to put the football in his hands. You have a Tua Tonga Valoa, you have the number two, the number one offense, you're paying him when they do pay him. You're paying him because he runs that offense, he runs that system the way you like it and the way you want it run. Uh, Burrow, the same thing. Uh, the Chargers, they did the exact opposite. They went out and they, they said, you know what, screw wide receivers. We could get a generational talent, a wide receiver in Marvin Harrison... Junior, nah, we're going to go get a big left tackle when we already have one, and then we're going to play him at right tackle. <laughs> it's it's just funny. And when I look at that rundown that I gave that I gave earlier about all the quarterbacks in the AFC, I don't feel bad about where I sit. In fact, if anything, like although it is funny you mentioned you don't pay your quarterback that percentage of the cap and then run the ball 45 times a game, that might be what the Bills are doing. <laughs> But but you, yeah, but when it comes, but we all saw that Bill season last year, okay? <laughs> all right, when when you guys got the the least bit nervous, you handed him the football and you said, "Josh, save us!" Yeah, go go okay. in the game. I don't care how. I don't care if it takes you running for thirteen yards on third and long. It doesn't matter. Just please go in the game. However, yeah, you I feel think like I you think the Cowboy the game was the only one where you guys stayed true to your new ethos and said we're going to run the football we're going to play behind our defense and we're going to play ball control and josh is just going to be efficient that's i think the, that was the only game uh every other game you needed to win it was josh save us here here's the football do stuff do so, josh allen stuff so and this is the thing there's nobody else there's a patrick mahomes there's a Josh Allen, and when I look at the AFC and I say, okay, I'm going down this list, I don't see many quarterbacks who genuinely scare me. There's teams that could beat us, but long-term, especially to the contracts I'm seeing signed, I like it. I like watching the Chargers marry themselves to Justin Herbert. I like watching the Jaguars marry themselves to Trevor Lawrence because what that tells me is, hey, the Bills are a rebuilding football team. We're trying to load up so that in next year, in the year beyond, we have a better cap situation so we can take some big swings and capitalize on what's left of Josh Allen's prime. Try to make another yeah, Super Bowl uh, run. The Bills are in, 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 a, in a good spot here where next year, uh, like this is a down year. Yep. Uh, any, way you, any way you slice it, it's a down year because you're essentially balancing your books with this season. Yep. Okay? And then next season, you're going to open up a little bit of cap space to, to start transitioning some of – uh, some of your older players out and getting some younger players and getting into free agency. The year after that, you're going to have to pay Josh Allen, and then you start the clock again. You're going to yep. have two years of building, <clears throat> and then you're going to have your two years of resetting, uh, you know, essentially your, your books and your, and your, your balance sheet. But at least so I know that they're in well a good this, spot. But at le and at least I know that well this is going on, I still have arguably the best quarterback in the conference. And so mm -hmm. we can do all the rebuilding we want. We don't have to rebuild as far as some of these other teams have to. Why? Because I have this one thing that to date has not failed me. Like it's yeah. Like I was telling, like I was telling a, a guy from 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 Cover One. I was telling him 
because he was going over this position, you know, the Bills have the best roster in the AFC. And I'm like, if you want to be really, really honest, you know, here, the Bills might have the third best roster. You just have the best quarterback, and it makes you think you have the best roster. Because when you watch it play out on the field on Sundays, when you look at the result, it, you forget about some of those holes because you've got a guy who just makes up for so many of them. Yeah, like you got some guys that are obviously really, really good. Matt Milano, Benford, I love those guys. I think they're really, really nice players. Look at Josh Allen goes out. Here's what I'll say. Josh Allen goes out and has one of the ugliest games that we've seen him play in a long time in that London game against the Jaguars. We didn't get our first first down until almost the second quarter. Like It was an embarrassing offensive game. And in the end, it was us trying to get an onside kick. And if we did, we were going to go down and score another touchdown. Game and it's like, yeah, I almost how did choked you... on my, I, I almost choked on my pancakes. I was laughing my ass off. I'm like, look at these guys falling all over themselves against the Jaguars, and then all of a sudden it was Josh Allen up and down the field, and it's, you know, it's at breakneck that. speed, and it's to that. score, and that's the problem. Is when I see the Jag that game specifically, when I go, you had every opportunity to put this away. Oh, it was a Trevor Lawrence fumble. It was a Trevor Lawrence interception. It was oh, three and out here by Trevor Lawrence in the offense, and all of a sudden the Bills are back in it. That's why I'm confident about the trajectory of what we have on the books already and what all these other quarterbacks are doing. You've already shown that it's almost like you not only have to be good, but then you have to have a bunch of crazy shit go your way in order to beat the Bills when we have Josh Allen, a quarterback. Well, now you're marrying yourself into that position for five years because that guy who's throwing the football for you can't hold a candle to our guy. So you better hope that that luck and all the bounces and everything else continue to go your way. Because if they don't, it doesn't matter what you won in terms of cap gymnastics. It doesn't matter. Yeah, and as far as and as far as the cap, uh, you're gonna have to have a, a general manager, and you're gonna you're gonna have to have a situation that's attractive to the right free agents. I put out a, a tweet earlier this off season in February, and I did something I never do, but I feel like doing it because so many people are doing it on on X. So I patted myself on the back when I said the success of the 2024 Miami Dolphins is not going to come from how many high price free agents they keep, but how many cheap one year deals they could sign of effective players. And yeah. if you go down the list, it's a pretty impressive list of what Chris Greer has done at the, with the bottom of the roster. No, well, and, and that's been the Bills thing ever since we got Josh Allen. And so this is it. You guys are entering your phase. Now, I can't wait to get you on a pod so that we can talk about later on in the offseason – when Tua signs this internet breaking contract, <laughs> because everyone's gonna it's have gonna a be hot big. Take. Everyone's okay. gonna have a hot take. It's gonna be a lot of fun to talk about. I can't wait to do it, but for tonight we gotta get the hell out of here. So Elf, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your insight as far as the cap machinations at the quarterback position. Where can everybody follow you if they're interested in hearing more of this? If you want to listen to our podcast, you can find our podcast anywhere you get your podcast. It's number three yards per carry. Uh, we have a Discord. It's on discord.gg forward slash OnlyFins. You can, become, you can become a member there for $3 a month. And now we have a store. Yeah. Yeah. I pick up every single dollar that's laying anywhere. Okay. So you could go to onlyfins.printify.me forward slash products and you could buy all kinds of things, including stuff like this, like this. I do like that shirt with the C on it. Yeah, well, you know, I'm a captain, you know, on the podcast. So. See, now I'd make a joke and say that it would say, stand for something else. But we're trying to work <laughs> clean these days. Guys, <laughs> guys, I love Elf. Give him a follow. It's been great, but we got to get the hell out of here. I'm Drew Gear. That's Chris Krueger. It's Elf Artiaga. This has been your Rock Pile Report.